Hello friends, I am Heidi and you are watching an episode of Heidi Creates. If you've never been on my channel before, welcome. Happy to have you here and hope you subscribe. A lot of you have reached out and asked that I show you some more techniques when it comes to free motion quilting or embroidery and um, how to be a little more artistic when it comes to your quilt making. There is nothing more gratifying than to make something while you're practicing. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm actually going to be taking you through how to make a miniature sampler. We're going to get this all done today in one little session here. This is going to put to practice your free motion quilting and then piecing this together. There's no binding or anything like that. Before we get started on this project, I just wanted to make mention that if you haven't started following me on Facebook, go to Facebook, type in Heidi Create 1965 and start following me there. I would love for you to join me on Facebook so that we can start sharing the projects that you're making as you're following my, my channel really fun just to kind of encourage one another as we are practicing our skills and developing new skills um, just to share what we've been doing. Also you can find me on Instagram. I don't know that I mentioned this but while we're doing this project the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be do doing some free motion quilting. So be sure that you have your darning foot on your machine, your feed dogs are dropped down, and you don't have to worry about stitch length or anything like that. Make sure that you are on a straight stitch, and yeah, let's get going. As we prepare to do this project, you need to make a decision how, um, as a beginner, how you want to work on this piece. If you want to work smaller and, and not within a embroidery hoop or something like that, you can go ahead and just cut to the size a little bit bigger than um, what you uh, want for a finished product. Or if you want to work with an embroidery hoop, then you're going to have to make sure that your piece is at least um, longer than um, the hoop so that you can actually get it in. If you decide that you want to use an embroidery hoop, I guess you might, I think you can do it this way with just a strip being held on e either end, but you may, you personally may want to fill the whole hoop with fabric. You want your piece to actually lay down flat on the surface of your machine, so you're going to have to turn it the opposite direction. Normally if you're working, doing handwork, you would have this up this way with your work on top, but you would have to turn it so it's on the bottom, laying flat on your machine. Personally, I don't use an embroidery hoop, um, so I'm just going to lay my fabric right on top of the batting. And this is where we're just going to use up some scraps deciding what you want to be you know your major color emphasis you can even turn it over <clears throat> and it has you don't see the black so much from this side I think I might like having the black along the side this point you can work it just like this you can lay a piece of you know netting or some organza you can see the pattern just fine through this it doesn't take away I don't think I'm not concerned about raw edges when it's not something that's going to be worn it's not a garment or something that needs to be washed you know on a regular basis but sometimes it's just really pretty to have something like this over it just along the edges I'm going to pin it in a few places there you can see that all right <clears throat> we're going to go over two different type of quilting stitches I think that will be a great way to start if you're just beginning Let's work on two t 
types of um, stitches here. My bobbin thread is actually pretty much, it's just an off-white. If you can't get your bobbin thread from showing in the top, then you'll want to match it to your thread that you're working with. The thread that I am putting through my machine right now, this is a sulky thread. It's a gold 40 weight thread. This is a sulky thread. Um, it's a 40 weight, so it's nice and shiny. It, it'll look pretty with, with this particular project. We are going to use two different type of stitch patterns. A leaf pattern and then also do um, a pebbling pattern. I'm thinking I'm going to do a line of leaves coming down this black border right here, this black fabric. I'm actually going to leave some pretty big pebbles coming down this gold block right here. And then to fill in everywhere else, it'll be just all irregular and smaller type um, pebbling. I'm going to go ahead and establish the larger pebble shapes just because it'll be towards the center where I kind of like to work towards the center and work out. And the reason I'm going to be doing these larger pebbles, if you look, if you look at this piece, I have larger pebbles here and here and here. Those just give you some places to um, focus the eye into. And so that's what we're going to do there. And we'll have, be able to do things like, you know, sewing in some buttons or just doing some different stitching there by hand to create an interest for the eye. Bring my bobbin thread up and you just go down into the fabric if you've never done this before and bring your needle straight up and then catch the bobbin thread as it's pulled up. When it comes to free motion quilting, start slowly, maybe do a little back and forth just to catch your thread and then don't move your hands too quickly because you do not want to have weird stitches. <laughs> um, you start going around in circles and you're going to see pulling on your threads. It won't lay nicely. And as you become more accustomed to this, you can actually speed up your work a little bit more. So with pebbling, you know, usually twice around is about what you do. You can actually do more, it's okay. And I want my pebbling, my, these ones are my main focus to this piece. So I want them to um, be irregular shaped. I don't want them all to be the same size. If you have to stop and reposition, when you restart, start slowly, and that way your lines won't become crooked and funny looking. You want nice, smooth, continuous lines. I've turned it around so I can actually see what I've done so far. And I do not want to fill in these areas with more pebbling. I want to keep those free and clear for doing some hand needlework or adding accent pieces like buttons or sequins or beads or whatever. So what I'm going to do is though is I'm going to fill in in between them. One of the things I wanted to mention is you want to keep a light hand. If you find yourself that you're pressing down too hard 
and um, you're not getting nice flow to your fabric, it's not moving easily, you might be pressing down too hard. You might be just relax and just have a light touch to your fabric and it should glide nicely over your machine. Now just trying to give you a little look-see at the pebbling here. If you're seeing your bobbin thread coming up from the bobbin, from the bottom, um, just loosen your top tension a little bit and that should drop it down so that's down in the sandwich more. So before I do any more of the pebbling, I'm going to go ahead and do my leaf design down this black strip. And then that way I can do the pebbling to fill in after those are put in. So with the leaf design, I'm just basically going to do a large teardrop shape, come to a point, and then go back, making a nice big rounded shape. To where I started. Then I'm going to come up the center and I usually like to make it a curved line. And then going back on my line, come up and do some veining. I'm going to retrace my leaf design. I just kind of like to have it very noticeable, making it kind of dark there. So I've retraced my leaf pattern. So then I'm going to come outside that leaf pattern, kind of like I'm doing vines, so that I can come up and do another leaf shape. And I kind of alternate the sides that I'm working on. Back to the beginning, do my center vein, and then make the little veining marks. Basically, it's like V shapes. Going up, making a line, making a V for the other one. And if you can't stay on your previous line perfectly, that's, that's okay. It actually looks pretty cool. Either way. So again, I'm going to follow my leaf shape. should be able to see that leaf design on top of the black. So now it's just going to be a matter of filling in, we're going to be doing the um, pebbling in, in all the spaces in between those leaves. Well, so far we have the leaf design over here um, with a little bit of pebbling on, on that side of it, on the far side of it, and then we have the pebbling on going down the um, this part here. So the last part that we have I have left to do is this section over here, and I was originally going to show you just the leaf pattern and the pebbling, but because this fabric underneath here has a paisley design, I think what I want to do is actually change my pattern to sort of mimic that. And so basically I'm going to be making some spiral motions with um, my sewing pattern. So basically just kind of spiraling in and when I get to the middle, spiraling back out without touching my previous line. And as I come out of it, 
then I will make another one going a different direction. Spiraling in, and then spiraling back out. And I can actually echo to get around to another side so that I can do more of the spirals. But using echoes to travel around if need be. And you can change the size of your spirals. You don't have to have as many loops going in towards the center as some others. Now I'm just echoing my previous lines. And I will actually use those echoes to fill in where it may be a little bit too small to make more of that design. So basically I only have this little bit over in here to do. Now I'm just echoing my previous lines. And a lot of that will probably get cut off, but I just like to make sure I have the design covering this. And I'm just going to travel along this edge here and then fill in this one little corner. So we have a little, ourselves a little sampler here. Now is a time where I actually like to cut it to the size that I want it to be. Do some satin stitching along the edges. I'm going to trim this to size and basically it's however whatever finished size you want it to be. Trim it to that size. I've put my regular sewing foot back on, raised the feed dogs my machine set for doing a satin stitch. Width right now is at 2.5. I do tend to like starting out narrower and then going wider like a second or third pass. I'm going to be using this cord to do a satin stitch over. It's going to give a little bit more height to my satin stitch. I'm going to leave some behind there. Something to hold on to while I get this started. But you're wanting to get your foot centered right around there. And if you find that it's not quite wide enough, move it over a little bit more. There we go. I want to cover that cord as much as I can. Now I like to have my needle buried in the piece so that my needle is actually holding that cord right where I want it when I'm making that corner. Okay, I've made it once all the way around with the cord in there and now I'm going to take the needle out and widen my stitch by a half a millimeter and go over the whole thing once again. And this is where my cut ends of my cord intersected right here so you kind of can get a little bit of fray showing there and I'll actually end up um, going over this again when I attach it to the um, 
canvas backing. You can see what a nice frame the cord being in there makes and just raises it up a little nice, nicer, I think. But it's totally optional. So now the next part really is just um, I'm doing some hand stitching on it and adding some components on here just to make it um, interesting. Now this particular piece of lace that I have has a bunch of these like medallion type shapes in them and um, I cut one of them out and I, as you can see I have it laid out here right now. I haven't done any stitching with it and that edge right here will get sewn in because I will be doing another pass of satin stitching later, later on. Like for this piece of lace right here, was I just eliminated the um, the crisscross pattern that's inside of this. Trim it in such a way that you have a nice even shape on each end and that happens to fit really well. And what I piece right here, I'm not going to worry about sewing it right here right now, but I am going to tack it on. Um, just along the edges and I'll probably um, do some beading and stuff with that as well. I have sewn all the way around the the medallion but I am going to do a running stitch right along this edge here so that when I do satin stitch that it's right in place and it won't move on me. I have some brass stampings that um, I've laid on here and I'm going to stitch those on. So I came up through the center of one of those stamps. It has a very small hole, so I'm going to use, I'm going to go through the seed bead and then go back down through this brass stamp. I kind of like to add a little knot Put it in there. I have these bone beads that I really like using in the center of these circle areas. When you go to do this yourself, it's just about using whatever components that you have. You can actually use buttons very nicely. I like doing the several stitches coming out from the center, kind of like spokes on a wheel. Put a few of these on, show you my progress in a few minutes. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the color um, choices that I made here with the thread and, and doing some of the French knotting and doing some of the sewing on of the beads. Um, this piece of black right here got covered, you know, by the, uh, the organza, and it appears to be more of a blue-gray than a black now. And so I matched that color with some embroidery th um, thread that I had and use that just it helps carry that color even more so throughout the piece which I think really um, has a beautiful effect. So I've done some French knotting through here and I am going to go ahead and do some more. I, I do have my piece finished as far as the beading and whatever uh, components that I want to put on and this is what I did next. Um, I'm going to add a little piece of um, lace right here on the bottom and that's going to get stitched in as I do my final satin stitch around the edge. Now I do have a piece of canvas back here and this is how I did the last one and um, and if you're curious as to this canvas I did not get this at a fabric store. I actually got this at Home Depot. This is something that I found in the paint department and it was um, it's 100% cotton uh, canvas drop cloth that they use for painting. Very inexpensive and it it works great for different projects. So, um, so that's what I am going to be sewing this onto, and do a satin stitch right over the previous satin stitch that I did, and I am going to increase my stitch just a tiny little bit. I have this little tool here. If ever I get somewhere where my foot's too wide and those beads are going to be an issue, I have this little. Um, tool here that um, allows me to slip in underneath my foot so that I can sew, keep sewing. Might be an issue on this spot right here. Definitely will be an issue over here. So um, I'll show you how I use that. There's a tool out there called the Gina Majig. It helps you get over really thick seams. 
This particular tool actually came with my machine. And the machine is a FAF Quilt Ambition 2.0. And this is for doing exactly what I'm going to be using it for and also for helping you change out your needles. But I suppose if you wanted to go find one of these at a FAF dealership, you probably could. One of the things I wanted to point out is to leave, if you're wanting to make a hanger out of this canvas, to leave yourself plenty of excess fabric at the top. I will be trimming this down pretty even with a lace and maybe maybe make it a little bit longer, but leaving yourself plenty of extra. I like having the fringe around the edges, so I got extra out here as well. Okay, this is the part where the bead is in the way of the foot. So what I need to do is, I got my needle down in the fabric, lifting my foot up, and I'm taking this little tool that skips over these things, and I'm using the thickness that is the closest to the thickness of the bead, and then just rest your foot back down on top of that. Carefully move your needle, making sure that it's not hitting. So you keep sewing. And eventually it'll just sew right off of that bead and be laying flat. And I'm actually off the tool, just remove it and keep going. I have the satin stitching done all the way around. You can see the laces on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and trim my edges. I want mine to be extending past the satin stitch. And I'm going to create a fringe with that. And I'm also going to extend it past the lace down here on the bottom just a little bit. For right now, I'm going to leave this um, piece as is. What I like to do with this is actually start pulling the threads out. I like the fringe. Um, I don't know, it has a nice organic feel to it. And I did cut it longer. I'm going to be putting this on a stick to hang it. And you don't have to use a stick. You can use a dowel. Um, whatever works for you. But I'm going to use a stick, I'm going to cut it to length, and once I've determined um, just how much I need of this fabric to go around that, then I'll trim this and, and I'll trim it more than what I need, just so I can have the fringe. I've cut my stick and I've drilled holes on each end, really tiny holes, just to fit um, some 20 gauge wire. I'm going to use that wire to do some beading along the sides, which is completely optional. But I just mostly I'm putting it around the stick because I'm wanting to see how far I want to bring this down. And I can feel my um, edge up here of the satin stitch. I am going to just mark on my fabric right where that edge is. And this is the mark where I'm going to cut this fabric. I'm actually going to do a zigzag stitch right along here about a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch away from that edge. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want my fabric to fray past that. I have my machine set zigzag stitch. It's at a 3.0 width with a 3 um, point zero for a stitch length. And I will do a back tack, don't want this to come undone. Go ahead, clip those on. And I will just do a running stitch using my embroidery floss. I'm Am I, um, I'm going to use the gray like I used in the rest of this. I want that stitch to show up there. All right, I did the running stitch on there. And just so you know, I like to use um, the full thickness of the DMC floss. I used all six strands cause, cause I just because I do like those um, stitches to show up really nicely. I don't want them to disappear. I want them to be seen. So now I'm just pulling out... Um, the thread so I can have the fringe here. So we've got the running stitch and the little fringe up here across the top. And now, um, basically, I'm going to go ahead and do my beading that I put on each end of the stick. Again, that's totally optional. 
Um, and I, you know, I'm not going to really show you that part just because it, everybody's got their own beads and it, it's just, you know, if you have beads, it's just kind of whatever you got to use, you use your stuff. And if you, uh, don't want to do beading, you can actually use, you can do your holes big enough to, to accommodate some twine and you can actually put your twine through the tops of the holes, have them come out the bottom and tie a knot on, at the bottom of side of these holes and you can hang it with just that with no beading at all. It certainly doesn't need to have the beading. Um, that's just a little extra something that I wanted to do. I have the beading all done with this piece and you can see I did that on the sides there. On this particular one I went ahead and just did a cotton um, twine for the hanger part which you can just tie the twine right onto your dowel or your stick, whatever it is that you decide to use, and, and then have some fringe like I have right here just hanging down from that, and it'll look really great. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial and doing a little mini sampler just to practice your free motion stitching and getting, getting, getting a good feel for it. I hope that you stay happy and healthy, and until next week, have a great one. Bye for now.